All right, so there's a bunch of things going on uh, and I've stopped making some knives for a while because I'm trying to do some ancillary projects, making some tools that I'm gonna need for scales, resin casting, uh, vacuum chamber for stabilizing wood, a whole bunch of things. So I've sort of stopped making the knives just for the time being. And there's a whole bunch of projects that I'm doing uh, around that so that when I get back to the seven knives that I'm currently making as part of this series, uh, I'll have a bunch of different techniques that I can use on each one of them. Today I wanted to talk about the maker's mark and putting your maker's mark on a knife. I've been looking for a solution for a long time uh, and finally found um, this Brother P-Touch 700. Now this isn't the perfect solution but it's a really good solution um, when, you know, as a beginner I'm changing my mark up, I'm trying to do different things, I'm experimenting and buying a stencil from somebody who makes them for eighty dollars a pop, or you know, fifty, hundred dollars a pop, depending on where you get them from, isn't really viable. So this thing I found, um, I've been looking for a stencil maker for a long time, and finally it came up. So I'm going to go through the process of making a stencil and etching it onto a knife using electro etching, uh, using this thing, and I'll show you the results. So let's get started. So these are the things you need: computer. So you need to be able to design your maker's mark. Um, and I'll show you mine in a minute. So obviously you need a, a way to do that. I use Adobe Illustrator, um, depending on what you know, you can do different things or get somebody who you know, who already makes uh, designs to do it for you. And then you get a JPEG or a PNG and you load the software, you load the picture via the Brother software onto the printer. It prints out a stencil. You then use that, tape it to your knife, you use, I'm using a battery charger, 12 volt battery charger, 4 amp. You then connect the uh, negative terminal to your knife. You then connect the positive terminal. I've just sort of jimmied up this uh, piece of steel, which has some fabric on it. The fabric's going to be soaked in saline solution, salty water. Connect this end to that, and then place that on the knife. Roll it back and forth, and the where the salty solution eats in, uh, touches the knife through the stencil, will eat in and cause it to go black. Quick note, you can use AC or DC power, it doesn't matter, but there is a big difference in results. If you're using AC power, um, what happens is you get a dark etch mark, but you don't get depth. If you use DC, you get dark as well, but it eats into the steel. So AC is lighter on the steel, DC etches deeper in. I'm going with DC. Also, um, you can connect the negative to this block uh, or the positive to this block. Now I found, I don't know why, I don't know the science behind it, but I found if I connect the positive to the steel and the negative to the block, you get a much more effective uh, etch. I have no idea if that is scientifically correct. It's just my experience so far. Also noting, I've only done this once, twice, sorry. Once was a bit of a schmozzle. Second time worked really well, so I'm hoping uh, this one works well. We'll see. Okay, so you can see in Illustrator, um, this is my normal brand mark. Um, when I print it out small, the lines are actually a bit too thin. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've thickened everything up a bit, put some black bits in. It's not exactly my mark, but honestly, when you pull out and when that's etched on a knife, it's going, I reckon it's gonna look fantastic. So I'm gonna try that uh, here with you guys. And now, so what you do is you save this as a JPEG or a PNG, which I've already done. I've got that here. And then you go ahead and you open up the P-Touch software. So the P-Touch 700 is connected to the computer. And when you open up the software, it gives you the strip. You can see the strip that's, uh, that's printable area. And so I now go ahead and click and drag my brand mark out there. So you've got this button here that says auto length. You may not be able to see that, but if you click it and then you drag your item along, you see it makes it bigger and smaller. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste a couple of these uh, and place them further apart, just in case one goes wrong, then I've got a few printed and ready to go. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this, make sure they're nice and central because I do want area on the sides of the top and the bottom to be able to stick use, uh, using the sticky tape. So now I've got that, 
I press print. Make sure you've got the brother chosen. Got one of them. Print. Hopefully, it should come out here. All right, so the thing that comes out of here is there's no ink on it. There's this backing here, which you take the backing off and you may not be able to see, um, but in some lights, let's have a look if we can see it. There you go, you can see the design. Now, the design is etched in a way that from one side it works, from the other side it doesn't work so well. So where you can see the warthog, that's been eaten in to this material which is impervious to liquid. So next step is to cut these out uh, and stick them onto our piece of steel. Okay, so I'm going to cut one of these off. Now, if you, when you get this, you can see one side is a bit matte and one side is shiny. So as far as I'm aware, you put the shiny side up. Now I don't have an, a, a real knife to do this on, so I'm just using this scrap piece. So basically, then you want to get some painter's tape, stick it down nice and firmly. It's really important to get as much of the stencil pressed down and contacting nicely with the steel. So we'll get that down there. I'm pretty sure that's good. Now, we have our charger here turned on. Now, one of the really important things that I found last time I used it is to not get the pad too wet. If you get it too wet, a lot of water can seep up underneath and then it etches in places you don't want to etch. So what I've done is I've wet this a little bit. I'm just going to get it wetter using the salty water because I just use a little bit of normal water to get it started. Squeeze that out. So it's, it's a bit of a fine line between too much and not enough. So now what I do is I place the positive onto the steel. I place the negative onto my electrode. And then using this, swing that around, I press down. and you can often hear it starting to fizz a little bit. Now you can see there's a tiny bit of black showing through there already. I don't think I've got enough water. I'm just gonna put a little bit more water on. I like to hear so I can hear it bubbling away under there. That means the electro etching is working. Now the problem with this is that, you know, it is a homemade setup. Uh, I'd highly recommend testing, testing, testing before you put this on a real knife. Because obviously you don't want to get all the way through and then realize you've mucked up your knife. Okay, so you can see already that that is looking pretty sweet. I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna take it off and see what it looks like. So that's pretty simple. I mean, you just take it off. Take that off. Give it a quick wipe. You can see it's etched. Now I've got, there's a little bit of depth to it. I didn't do a huge amount, so it's not very deep. What I'm gonna do is quickly sand that with a little bit of uh, hand sandpaper and just see if any of the details come up any better than that. So I'm just using a small piece of 800 grit here. Go over it. 
Oh, that's so much nicer. Not sure if you can see that. I'll bring it down a bit. Now, uh, because I did this on a reasonably rough piece of steel, um, there's a, there are a lot of indents going on. Um, and you can see I may also not have done it enough, so I'm going to do another another pass, I reckon. But you can see what it's done uh, on a flat blade uh, and with a longer etching cycle, which I'll do now, I reckon that's going to look pretty sweet. Okay, this time I'm just using this random knife. That This is the first knife I ever made. Uh, and, and so it's got a nicer, smoother finish. And I'm also going to switch up. I'm going to use the red on this side and the, well, the positive on this side and the negative on the knife. No idea if it makes a difference. Uh, last time it did. Um, this time I didn't get a lot of black in the etch. So um, maybe I just uh, got it wrong. Let's see what happens anyway. So I'm going to connect my negative to my knife get a bit of the liquid on the terminal. And let's see what happens. Now, the, one of the keys really is not to move it around very much, I don't think, because then you do get a uh, bleed underneath. So what I've done is I've made this pad a nice depth, so that a uh, thickness, so that it fills a good portion of the design. Right, I'm not sure if it's 100% worked. Um, it looks pretty cool. It looks like something's going on there. Um, doesn't look as defined as the last one. And that was actually a much longer etch. So let's see what happens anyway. Interesting. That has done almost nothing. And it's just colored the surface. Well, let's zoom in just colored the surface slightly. It's uh, not eaten in at all to the knife. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different one on and I'm going to switch the terminals around and we'll see what happens. All right, third time lucky. So I've reprinted, I've stuck that on nice and tight. Now I've got the positive attached to the knife. I've got the negative attached to this terminal. And now let's give this one a crack. Once again, rocking back and forth a bit. I can hear it starting to fizz now. Now it's looking pretty black, but I'm gonna keep it on there because I wanna see what sort of depth we can get to this etch. So you can see the bubbling. Can you hear it? All right, now let's see what happens. I think I've probably gone way too far with this one, but we'll see. Every time you take it off, it looks really horrible. Um, like you've just completely mucked it up. Uh, but let's wipe that off and see if this etch looks any good. All right, you ready? Get a piece of 360 so you can see what it looks like now. Now I'm not saying it's going to turn out well, it may, I may just have stuffed it up, but let's have a look. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty nice, really. So, I reckon I could probably do a much better job, um, but for what we're doing now, having a look at, there we go. Sometimes the light on the camera just doesn't pick it up very well. It looks, it actually looks quite a lot better to me here. Um, there you go, that's looking pretty good. Um, so playing around with the design to make it uh, stand out more, make it thicker, thinner, just getting, playing with the, the size of the lines, I reckon is gonna really help. Um, and also, uh, if you're doing this before you heat treat, which uh, I'm going to be, then that'll really go black in all of there. And when you start to then hand sand, 
um, all of the uh, deep bits will be a, just a nice black. At the moment you can see there's kind of this mottled black which isn't necessarily what we want. Um, but yeah, with the deep black, I reckon that'll be really nice. And you can see the detail, I mean, you can even see the eyes in there. Um, but once that's, you know, on a real knife, heat treated and then sanded back, uh, I reckon that looks pretty sweet. Okay, so all in all, uh, this is $110, so I can get a lot of um, stencils out of that. Uh, it's not the best and most professional way to do your Maker's Mark, but by far for me, um, it is absolutely the best solution that I've found uh, for the price range and for the outcome. Um, you know, maybe $20 for a roll, and I don't know how many stencils that's going to make. I think it's going to make quite a few, but it does a few little quirky things, but all in all, that's pretty awesome. Um, I first saw this machine, the Brother P700, um, from uh, Chop Knives with Craig, uh, who also does Knife Talk. Um, if you're looking for a good pod podcast to listen to. Uh, he did a really quick tutorial um, on it. Uh, and so that's where I got the idea and it's a fantastic machine. I just wanted to go a little bit more in depth with what I was doing here and uh, show you some of the ins and outs of actual electro etching. This is a good way to do it. Um, there are machines, uh, I can't even remember the name of them, but electro etch or something like that. Uh, and all the, the, the tip where the contact makes uh, contact with the knife is a lot more professional. It probably doesn't do any bleed, all of those kind of things, but they are a lot more expensive. You're talking $250 plus, um, whereas I already had battery charger, um, obviously all the steel, I have everything I need. All I needed was the stencil and this printer is perfect solution for me. So if you're looking for a maker's mark, which doesn't cost the world and you can change, you can, if you're making a knife for somebody's birthday, you can print their name out and etch their knife, their name into it and their date, um, you know, the birth date, whatever it might be. So it's a fantastic way to do those kind of custom experiences. Um, yeah, for 110 bucks, honestly, I cannot find a better solution than I've looked for a very long time. So yeah, check it out. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other projects coming up. I am making a pressure pot, a vacuum chamber. I'm gonna be stabilizing wood. Uh, I've got some resin coming and colour coming from Toby Fire and Steel. Um, I am going to be making, remaking the articulating arm on my grinder because it's just not good enough. That's actually one of the reasons I've stopped making knives uh, because I need to remake that articulating arm. I just can't get the uh, detail that I want with it as it is. I'm not buying anything in terms of I'm not buying a chamber, a pressure pot. Um, or a vacuum chamber. I'm making it all from scratch out of PVC, uh, you know, anything that I can find around. Um, I am on a budget, so this is a great way to learn. Um, if I want or need these things, I could go out and buy uh, cast resin scales, but I want to see if I can make them and don't want to pay a huge amount of money up front. If then I realize I really love it, then I'll, I'll pay some money for the really quality stuff. So stick with me. Um, please like, subscribe. Uh, once you press the subscribe button, please press the notifications so that whenever I post another one, uh, you see them come on. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one.